Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Seneca Libertarian Society, C Y N L I B S O C dot com on the interwebs. I am here with some CLS ology. Earlier when the fuck was it? This week? I think it was Monday. I think it was my Monday podcast. I released stating the obvious two hundred sixteen the third element of anarcho-capitalism no one talks about, in which I talked about the third element of anarcho-capitalism. So go listen to it. <clears throat> Meanwhile, in the past on this podcast, I have often talked about the TV series on the Stars Network, Spartacus, and how great it was, how much I loved it, and of course making all these comparisons and talking about how it relates to anarcho-capitalism and all this other stuff. I'm currently watching the Spartacus movie, the old one made in, whenever it was made, which stars Kirk Douglas as Spartacus. I am maybe an hour into it, something in that range. I'm not certain because I'm not paying attention to the time. And obviously they're trying to shove a lot into a two, two and a half, three hour movie. I don't even know how long it is. I didn't look. So there's all of that. Over on the website, I got a comment from one of my listeners on stating the obvious 216, the third element of anarcho-capitalism no one talks about. And this is what this commenter wrote. It's okay, Peter. We are not going to initiate aggression against you. But you must understand, by initiating aggression against us, you will only create more of us. It kind of works the same way that you can see the U.S. government creating more and more terrorists by initiating aggression against people to the point that they start to fight back. In other words, the harder you fight against us, the greater your enemy becomes, and it will eventually destroy you if you do not join it. Don't you know the history of the slave Spartacus who set off the spark that destroyed Rome? And that's the end of the comment. I read somewhere in the fairly recent past. I don't, if this was a story, if this was really a saying at the time, if this was supposed to be a parable, I, I don't know the truth value of this, if this ever actually happened or if people are just saying it happened or whatever. But it's, it's one of those things where the story goes like this. There are two Roman citizens standing around and one of them is complaining about how in Rome slaves just go wherever they want to and there's no control over them and he says what we need to do is we need to make all of the slaves wear some kind of mark so that they can be easily identified as slaves and that way we can keep the slaves from coming into places we don't want the slaves to be in and the other Roman citizen said to the first no, that's a really bad idea because if we make all the slaves wear a mark, then they will see how many of them there are and we don't want them to know that they are the vast majority. So how does all of this tie together? You know, here's the thing about the Spartacus slave revolution. And again, keep in mind, I wasn't there when it happened. I don't know what really happened. But if Spartacus and the other slaves rebelled against the Roman Empire, overthrew their masters, and did what they were doing, it was because they desired freedom. But so many slaves didn't desire freedom. And this is where we have the breakdown in our society when it comes to from the perspective of us as ANCAPs looking at it saying, well, but you know, freedom this, freedom that, blah, blah, blah. I think what so many of 
the ANCAPs out there don't understand or don't get is that most people, the vast majority of people, do not want to give up their slavery. Because for the vast majority of citizens of the United States, their slavery is a net benefit to them. And this comes right back to the third pillar of anarcho-capitalism, the third element of anarcho-capitalism, which is creating value within yourself so that you can create value within the world around you, so that you can exchange value with other people around you, so that you can become interdependent so that you can become independent. The average slave in the United States is receiving the WIC and the welfare and the food stamps and the tax subsidies and the tax write-offs and the Obamacare subsidies and the subsidized public transportation and all of this stuff. And they truly believe that they're getting this stuff, quote-unquote, for free. Because they don't understand opportunity cost. They don't get that entire concept because they're not very bright. And so they believe they're getting all of this stuff for free. And they're not going to give any of this up. That's the thing. The vast majority of the slaves don't want to stop being slaves. They like being slaves. They want to keep being slaves. Being slaves is, as far as they can tell, beneficial to them. And therefore, this comes back to why I still maintain that even though the anarcho-capitalist approach to philosophy and to living with other humans and to society is the correct approach, I still think it's going to fail simply because, and this ties back to what I talked about, why the marketplace will fail. Because the 99% are not smart. The 99% do not have intelligence. The 99% want to be slaves. The 99% want to be parasites. The 99% do not have any desire to create. The 99% have no desire to move beyond where they are to do something better, to do something greater. They are completely content to be the children of the state. 